So one thing that's always important to remember is that I'm always learning and trying to improve what I do here in the workshop. And sometimes that means I'm gonna make mistakes along the way. Case in point is this slitting saw arbor. I'm sure most of you are pretty familiar with this tool. You know, it's used to cut thin channels of material or do very accurate cuts in order to cut something in half. Now the blades that I buy are nothing special. I just get them off eBay, but I do make an effort to make the arbors that hold them. And I do that because they need to work with my quick change tooling system. And to be quite honest, when I made this one, I made a bit of a hash out of it. You know, the first one that I made was way too short and the spindle kept crashing into work pieces. Or I guess let's put it, I kept crashing the spindle into work pieces. So as a result, I simply made a longer one. And that's fine and all, except I don't think the quick change tooling system is rigid enough in order to hold this tool. You know, there is going to be a lot more torque acting on the part because it is longer and it's pretty evident, at least when I'm using it, that there is flex. There's also a fair amount of run out in the saw, owing to the old lathe not being rigid enough and me not having a steady rest when making it. It's safe to say that all the footage was never used and it should never be seen by anyone. Now that's all fine and good, except I've bought some larger saws and they are going to need a larger arbor. So let's do it all again and hopefully let's do a better job. So the biggest change that I'm going to make is at the shank end. Instead of using a 20mm shank, we're going to use a Morse taper to hold it directly in the spindle. That should make for a more rigid setup. Now I'm using a piece of cold rolled offcut that I recently bought and that should be good enough for a tool like this. I'll rough down the OD to 24mm, which is the large end for Morse Taper 3. I can then create a step down at the end. I can now get the carriage locked and the taper cut. And I'm simply going to use a battery drill as a power feed. I always find that I get a much better surface finish this way and it is a lot quicker. And that is a pretty good fit in the Morse taper sleeve. Although some of those high spots left by the cutter do need taking down. Now I don't have any contact glue, but some Sharpie does work okay. And as you can probably see, we do have contact at both the top and the bottom of the taper. And there's no wobble or play in the taper. So I think I'm gonna call it there. And if you are wondering, there is a small gap at the top between the tool and the taper, and it's not bottoming out. And the final thing left to do is tap the M12 thread for the drawbar.
With the main shaft now turned down to size, I'm going to turn down the locating ring for the saws to locate onto. And that's a pretty big design change compared to the old arbors where I used the retaining clamp to function as the clamp and the locator for the saw. And that in my opinion was asking one component to do too many tasks at once. And after relieving the back, the saw now clicks very nicely into place. I can now get a countable made for the clamp. The next thing to do is take a piece of steel and turn down the clamping part. And with that done, the last thing to do is get it in the mill and get two flats cut so I can hold the thing in the bench vise. And you know what? That definitely looks the piece. Alright, so not half bad. I can definitely still see a little bit of run out in the tool. I'm not exactly sure if that's the tool or the slitting saw itself that's a little bit out. These cheaper ones can be a little bit poorly made, so that can happen. But on the whole, it's not a huge amount and you have to be looking really at it to see the run out. So I think for most stuff, it's going to be just fine. What's most important though is how it performs. And I'm happy to say that it is better. I think the Morse taper paired with the thicker body just make it an overall better tool. And that's about it for now. 
Sorry about the shorter length video, I am recovering from a respiratory infection, so I'm trying to keep the talking down to a minimum. And apart from that, thanks for watching.